Hey Fly Simmers, Bandit here. Welcome to another episode of our trip around the world in the Diamond DA62. Starting off here today in Quebec City. Still lots of snow on the ground. It's pretty busy here this morning. See an Air Canada flight parked over here at the gate behind us. And it uh, looks like not too bad a day in Quebec City. Right now the winds are light and looking at 5,000 broken cloud. Today we're going to be heading up to Labrador. Uh, Goose Bay and then uh, we are going to hopefully do a second leg up to uh, Greenland and so right now for the first leg I'll just go over the planning for that so I use this program called Little Nav Map and it uh, is a great uh, planning tool for VFR or even IFR uh, legs it has lots of airport information and basically you just right click on airports and you just add them as destination or as departure or add on route waypoints and it gives you your track and distance and uh, then you got a nice uh, profile on the side here too so you can see what altitude you need to fly at to maintain safe clearance above ground so you see the terrain is quite high here initially up to about 3500 feet so they recommend 5000 feet as a minimum safe altitude and then uh, once we get past our first waypoint, 4,000 feet is a good safe altitude. So, so that's good to know if we have to go into cloud for any reason, and uh, we don't want to. We want to maintain that safe altitude. We're uh, going to fly up through Quebec here, and we're going to fly up to Manic Five, which is uh, one of Quebec's biggest hydro projects, and. They have this big reservoir, and uh, it's kind of interesting looking. Uh, I don't know. It's kind of it's very round shaped, almost like a meteor formed it or something years ago. And then we're on up to Goose Bay, and we'll talk a little bit about the uh, Goose Bay. It's got a, quite a history to it. Okay, so here we are. Let's get going. We will. I've already got the fuel turned on and the battery turned on. We've got a position light on, so we'll get our masters uh, turned on here. And the alternator's on. And check uh, to the right, to the left. Looks all clear. And we will go ahead and start number two engine. And we'll start the uh, number one engine. Get our avionics master on, fuel heat on, set our flaps for takeoff, get our taxi light on, add a little bit of power, parking brakes released, So I checked the weather in Goose Bay. It's supposed to be pretty nice there too, just some high broken cloud and and uh, so that should be an issue, although there is some uh, pretty crappy weather over central Quebec, so we might have to go IMC, which is flying in uh, in cloud instrument uh, meteorological conditions, so we'll deal with that if we have to. So our gas is all topped up. We have our de-ice fluid topped up if we need it. And I'll just make an advisory call. Quebec City traffic, it's Diamond, Bandit November, Delta Tango. We are entering runway 24. Going to be taking off for our southeast bound departure. Well, I mean uh, VFR, any conflicting traffic, it's uh, Bandit, November, Delta Tango. We're all lined up here. Flaps our takeoff. Put our boost pumps on. Landing lights, strobe lights, taxi light off. And I think we're all ready to go.
Driver's 80 knots. We'll rotate. Pause the rate. Gears up. Knots, get the flaps up. And we'll do a left turn out. So, first, we're going to do a little flyby down the St. Lawrence by Quebec City here before we head off on our track here. I've already pre programmed the flight in the Garmin system, so you can see our track heading out here, but we're just going to head down to the uh, river and do a little flyby at Quebec City first. We'll just stick at this altitude. So we'll do our we'll take off gears up, flaps are up, turn our landing light off, and we'll get our boost pumps off. Put our CDI up for our GPS so we have that when we need it. And we'll just uh, do a little flyby at Quebec City here on the way out. Quebec City is located along the St. Lawrence River here and it's uh, where the river opens up quite wide. So uh, starting here it starts to narrow down as it heads down to the Great Lakes and as it heads up into the Atlantic Ocean it starts to widen up quite a bit. It's, it's quite a shipping lane, the St. Lawrence River. Uh, it has opened up uh, North America for shipping and uh, it's got a lot of history to it. So. Quebec has always been a fairly important place and you'll see it's got a lot of history, it's got the old city over there and a fort uh, up on the point of the hill to the left there so we'll have a look at that as we uh, head out. So if you see up on the point on the hill I think there's a fort up here and we'll see that when we go by and this is the newer part of downtown Quebec City over here and old Quebec City is uh, this part right here and it's uh, got a very European look to it, so we'll take a look at that as we go by. Still lots of snow here. Yeah, there's the fort there. to uh, the old part of Quebec City and the chateau and everything. Very nice. And then we'll continue uh, on up the St. Lawrence here. So we'll head on up and Get a little altitude because we got the hills coming up here. We might have to go into the clouds, so see how that goes. And uh, we'll uh, start to intercept our track here up to the Manic 5 Dam. Okay, so we're intercepting our track up to Manic 5. And I was planning to go to 7,500 feet, but uh, the cloud is uh, going to keep us down at 5,500 feet for now. So we just clear cloud and uh, that's a uh, safe altitude. As long as we're above 5,000 we should be good for all the terrain that's ahead of us. So if the cloud does get a little lower we'll have to go into cloud so I'll have to climb up and get an instrument clearance. But for now uh, we'll just stay at 5,500 feet and see how that goes. It is pretty bumpy out here. You can see we got a pretty good wind but it's going to be a nice tailwind so it's about 40 knots and with the hilly terrain here it makes for a bumpy ride so so let's hang on to our seats and uh, see how this leg goes okay here we are still cruising along at uh, 5500 feet just below the clouds so far that's held out for us uh, we've been lucky so far still a bumpy ride we're just coming up on the Saguenay River which branches off the St. Lawrence River you can see how the St. Lawrence River opens up quite a bit as it heads out east and the Saguenay River is uh, just a branch river that branches uh, off, actually flows into the St. Lawrence River. And it's a beautiful area at Quebec. 
look at the Saguenay River region here. It's quite a uh, beautiful area in northern Quebec. So we'll keep trucking along, hopefully stay clear of the cloud, but uh, it's looking like it's getting lower up ahead so we might have to climb up and get a instrument clearance uh, and get up to a little higher altitude. We're still at 5,500 feet here, really don't want to go too much lower. Well, here we are in the cloud now. I had to climb up because the ceiling started to drop, the weather wasn't getting very good up ahead, so I just uh, pretended we got an IFR clearance and we climbed up to 7,000 feet, which is appropriate for the direction of flight. And that's a safe altitude on this route and we are currently cruising at that altitude. I had uh, some options. I could have went higher, but right now the temperature is still below freezing, so I decided to stay at 7,000 feet because I don't want to have to worry about icing uh, for a prolonged period of time. And uh, if I look at another tool I use here, it was the uh, area forecast for this area. We're flying up basically through this area up to Goose Bay, and they have uh, layers from 3,000 to 18,000 feet, so I might have had to climb up quite high to get clear of the weather. So since it's uh, below freezing, uh, I decided to just stay here at 7,000 feet. But once we get the uh, Labrador is right up here, or Goose Bay is right up here, so once we get through this system here, we should be okay to uh, get into Goose Bay. And the weather forecast for Goose Bay is pretty good. So Okay, we're just coming up to the Manic 5 Reservoir, and we're still in cloud here. Temperature is now down to 1 degree to descend to 5,000 feet because we're getting too close to freezing level here and uh, for the rest of our flight the safe altitude is 5,000 feet so we'll do that and maybe we'll get clear of the cloud and be able to see the uh, dam and the reservoir as we fly by so stand by for that. Okay I descended down to 4,000 feet which is our safe altitude now and you can just barely see the ground still uh, flying on instruments here but uh, we'll fly by and see if we can have a look at the dam here that uh, is called Manic 5 and it's one of the biggest hydro projects in Quebec. Let's go to an external view and then maybe we'll uh, see the dam here as we fly by. Still not very good visibility and the temperature is right at zero here so if it gets colder I'm gonna have to climb up. For now, this is uh, the lowest safe altitude we can fly and stay clear of the icing. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh, look at that. It's all lit up at the, in the dark here. Quite impressive. That's a big dam there, and we unfortunately can't see the reservoir, which would be interesting to see because it's quite an interesting shape. But there's the dam, and at least we got to see that uh, since we came a little bit out of our way going directly to Goose Bay. So now we'll head uh, on to Goose Bay. We're at that point where we need to look at our fuel and transfer our fuel over, so. Right now, fuel quantity shows about 12 gallons on each tank, but we do have our aux fuel, which is 18 gallons per tank. Check our fuel flow is still good here. It's around 17, just under 17 gallons per hour. So, so if you look at our time to go, we've got 113 minutes, so just under two hours to go. So if we didn't have the aux tanks, we would be pretty tight on gas here because we're burning about 17 gallons an hour and uh, we've got uh, 24 gallons in the main tank so I don't think that would be enough to get us there but what we'll do is we'll go down and we'll turn on our box boost pumps and got our advisory that they're on here and we'll just watch the fuel it should come right back up to 25 gallons aside over the next uh, 20 minutes or so, and that should be more than enough to give us uh, get us into Goose Bay with some alternates.
just take this time to talk a little bit about Goose Bay and some of the history of it. And you see Goose Bay is in Labrador, uh, northern part of Canada here. And it was built in the 1940s, early 1940s, as a stepping stone uh, to get to Europe. So a lot of the bombers and transport planes for the war effort had to fly kind of the route we're taking uh, to get to Europe. So uh, the Americans built Goose Bay in 1941 and, and it became a staging point for World War II. And then subsequently after, after that it became an American base during the Cold War uh, where they used to uh, keep fighters based out of here and, and uh, that was part of the Cold War effort. And, uh, also, it was uh, used extensively by NATO for low-level flying training in the Labrador area. So countries from all the NATO countries like Belgium, France, Great Britain, Germany would come to Goose Bay uh, every summer and then they would uh, do low-level fighter training uh, because it's such a huge area and it's very similar to uh, the terrain in Russia that they would have to fly in for real uh, during the Cold War. So. It was a huge uh, operational fighter base for quite a period of time and uh, now that uh, is subsided and I don't think they do any training there anymore, or very little anyway. It still is a Canadian Forces base and a civilian airport. So it's quite a st extensive stepping stone to the northern part of Canada here, but as far as a military base, uh, it's uh, toned down quite a bit. Anyway, so uh, I'll uh, talk to you next as we're getting a little closer to uh, Goose Bay. We're going to be flying up the Goose or Churchill River here into Goose Bay and some of the beautiful scenery as we head up that way. So I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, we're still cruising along to Goose Bay and our fuel did transfer there. So we'll cancel that and shut off. Pumps, and you can see we're back to lots of fuel. We've got less than I don't know, about an hour and a half to go to Goose Bay, and we're still at 4,000 feet. And we did skirt in and out of some cloud here, and we picked up some ice because the temperature is now minus three. So we're clear of cloud, but I'm just going to clean that up. So we'll put uh, our wing the ice on here. We'll also put some glide claw fluid on the windshield just to clean that up a bit so we can see outside. Yeah, this is why you need to have the icing capability in this kind of weather. So take a few minutes but that'll uh, clean up. See it's starting to get a little bit clearer right now. And we do pick up some ice on the aircraft as well. So. Okay, but it looks like the weather is Picking up as we get closer to Goose Bay, we're getting clear of that system, so I think we should have nice weather when we arrive in Goose Bay, so I'll see you on final approach. Okay, we're about an hour back from Goose Bay right now, and uh, I was getting significant icing at 4,000 feet, so decided to climb up till we got clear of cloud. We're just between layers here at 7,000 feet. We're not picking up any icing, so I think we'll hang out here for a little while. And we could climb up a little bit higher, I think, if we had to, but uh, this should do for now. And uh, the weather does pick up at Goose Bay. I just checked. It's a uh, high broken cloud and light winds out of the north, so uh, hopefully it should be pretty good. We've still got lots of gas, and I think that's it for now, so I'll check in with you again on final landing. Okay, 
Okay, we're just coming into Goose Bay, about 37 miles away. And we're going to be starting our descent here. We're just flying along the Churchill River, which goes into the inlet, which leads up to Goose Bay right here. And we should be on the ground in a few minutes, so I'm going to start with a descent here. Disengage the autopilot. Turn some power off. There's the Churchill River up ahead there. And we'll start our descent. We're going to be landing on runway 08 straight ahead. The winds are light. And as predicted, the weather did clear up very nicely here, so that's great. Got a good weather for our turnaround before we head off to Greenland. So I'll see you again on short final. As we're on final here, I just wanted to point out as we're along the Churchill River here. This is going to be the next major hydro project in uh, Canada. It's called Muskrat Falls and they're going to build the dam across here. Dam up at Churchill River. And it's supposed to be one of the biggest producing hydroelectric plants in the future. Okay, so let's uh, transition to the final approach. Okay, we're on final approach for Goose Bay. You can see the main runway, 08 right here. So we'll get slowing down here and bring the power back a little bit more. We got our landing light is on. Still pretty snowy up here in Labrador. Another tidbit, tidbit I read about uh, Goose Bay was because it was such a long runway here, it's over 12,000 feet, and because it's on the launch trajectory for the space shuttle, this was quite often used as an alternate airport for uh, space shuttle launches when the weather was good here. Okay, we'll get the gear down. to take off for approach. This is quite a big airport for the middle of nowhere. I don't think the town is very big. It's less than 5,000 people. Get our land flap. We got gears down, flaps are our land. Slowing down to about 85 knots. So we'll roll it out to the end here. It's a long taxi in. Uh, I think the fueling is right at the far end of the runway here. So. I'll uh, see you there as we prepare for our next leg. So we're going to shut down, get some uh, food, maybe have a beer. No, I think we'll save the beer till the next after the next leg. So we'll get some food, uh, use the bathroom, and uh, follow our flight plan for our next leg to Greenland. So I'll see you in a few minutes at the uh, FBO there. Okay, we're back and we are here on the runway, runway 34 in Goose Bay, and the weather has come down a little bit. I don't think this was forecast, but this is what they're showing for the actual weather here. We're planning uh, to fly IFR to the next leg to Greenland anyway, so we're to part off out of here. We're going to make a right turn out along 
this track and that is taking us direct to uh, Greenland and I'll just show you on the map here. So we're going right across the water here. Open water right up to a place called, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it, but it's I think it's Nassar Sack. Uh, Greenland and it's a popular general aviation stopover on the way to Iceland so it's about equidistance uh, it's about 600 miles it's gonna take about six uh, flight plan says about 60 gallons of gas so we've got a full load of gas so we should be good to go and then our next day we'll be uh, heading off to Iceland so let's uh, get in the air and then uh, get set up and uh, get on our uh, IFR track to uh, Greenland so we just do a quick uh, check here. Our lights are good. Got our fuel pumps on. Flaps are at takeoff. We're all set. We got 11,000 feet set for our altitude. So parking brake is released. Let's go. You can see it's getting dark here in Goose Bay already. This time of year, I think it's around five o'clock local time. It's definitely going to be dark in Greenland when we arrive there. So. Should make it a little bit more challenging for the arrival, but the weather is supposed to be good when we get there, so we'll see how, how it looks. There's 80 knots, we'll rotate. Gear up. Speed is good, flaps up. About 400 feet above ground, IFR. It's uh, safe for us to turn on our track here. And we will get the autopilot set up. So I've already got the altitude selected. I'm going to turn the autopilot on. And it's going to take whatever attitude we had. And I am going to keep the turn going here to get on our track. And I'm going to select what's called flight level change, and it's going to continue that climb at that selected airspeed. And I can change the airspeed up or down. So I want to climb at about 220 knots for a good rate of climb. And so the autopilot will keep that climb going at that speed until we level off or we run out of power, whichever occurs first. So in this case, it should be level off. And we've got 11,000 feet set. So now I'm going to select nav because we're on an intercept heading for our nav and the autopilot's going to roll out and it's going to maintain that intercept heading to get on our nav track to Greenland. And we will just continue along this track until we get our intercept and then we'll track outbound to Greenland. Now we are getting some icing so I'm going to turn on our de-ice and I'm not going to worry about the windshield right now because we don't need to see anything anyway since we're in cloud, but I do want the wings to remain uh, clean, so hopefully we can get above this cloud and uh, that'll keep us out of the icing for Lake to Greenwood, Greenland. Okay, so I'll talk to you uh, as we level off and we'll see how things look uh, weather-wise when we get leveled off. Well, here we are at 19,000 feet, finally leveled off out of Goose Bay and the weather never picked up. We're still in cloud here, and we were icing up pretty good at our planned altitude of 11,000 11, feet, so I kept climbing up to as high as we could to see if we could stop the icing, and it's uh, pretty much hasn't gotten any worse. It's, it's pretty good right now, probably because it's so cold out, minus 26 degrees. So. So I think we're just going to hang out here, and the other benefit of being up here is we got a really good tailwind, so our ground speed is 230 knots, which is pretty fast, so that's going to put us in about a two and a half hour flight to Greenland from this point. So I think we'll stick it out up here, and hopefully the weather will improve as we go further along. I'm just going to keep the, the icing, wing de ice on for now, but uh, the windscreen hasn't de-iced up anymore since we leveled off here. So I'll talk about doing this leg too 
we would need to carry survival equipment for this type of over, over water flight. And so that would include a life raft and survival suits. And here's a picture of a survival suit. So we'd all have to kind of be wearing these, uh, not done right up, but uh, ready to do up in short notice in case we had to ditch. And then we'd have to have a life raft as well. So, so that's some of the survival equipment you would need for doing this type of leg. And another thing, since we're up at 19,000 feet, we would need oxygen. So this aircraft would carry uh, supplemental oxygen. And so it's just an oxygen cylinder and it has uh, little uh, lines that you just put, kind of like in a hospital, you just put it around your, uh, over your head and under your nose so that you're breathing oxygen uh, because the oxygen at this level is not enough. So, uh, so that's another piece of equipment we need for this type of flight. So, I think we're just going to hang out up here and uh, get closer to Greenland and see how the weather looks when we get there. So we will see you uh, when we get to the top of descent point in uh, Greenland. Well, we're about one hour back from our destination in Greenland. And we are clear of the cloud now for the most part. It's pretty dark out there. And we have an awesome tailwind of 76 knots, so our ground speed is right up there at 235. So that's pretty good. That's why we're heading east. And a beautiful sun on the horizon there. Take a look outside. So we still have the sun poking up over the horizon, but uh, it's going to be pretty dark when we get to Greenland there. So I'll uh, check back in with you on our final approach, and hopefully the weather holds out because there's no instrument approaches at this airport. So and, uh, we do have enough gas though to divert to uh, an airport north of this one which does have an issue with approach if we need to. So, so I'll see you at the uh, descent into Greenland. Okay, here we are on descent into Greenland. And the airport is about 58 miles ahead of us. We're just on a slow descent here. Right now we're clear of cloud and it's pretty dark outside and I cannot see anything. So I can still see the stars though. So I assume we might have to go through a little bit of cloud because I can't see any formations ahead. So right now I'm planning to descend to 3,500 feet. And uh, looking at the chart, I was able to determine that the highest obstacle between us and the airport within 10 miles of our track is about 2,500 feet, it's a tower, a radio tower, and so as long as we don't go below 3,500 feet, that will give us a thousand foot clearance above that obstacle until we can see the airport. So I'm hoping we can see the airport about 10 miles back and have it visual, and if not, uh, I think then we're going to have to go to our alternate airport. And so what I'll do is I'll check back in with you uh, when we're about 10 miles back and hopefully we have the airport in sight. Okay, here we are about uh, 10 miles back and the airport should be just over here. So I don't think we've seen any cloud and we look up and yeah, there's the runway right there. So runway 07, we're going to land on the Windsor Light. The altimeter is set and I'm just going to continue in here visually to the runway. So I know there's no real obstacles. There's obstacles to the right here. So as long as I stay to the left, I should be okay. So I'll disengage the autopilot. And we'll offset and get lined up with the runway a little bit better here. It's never fun coming into these dark places at night. There's, can't see anything. It's like a black hole. Kind of have to fly half on instruments and half visually, so you have the runway visual, but you're flying on instruments for keeping the aircraft level. Get the gear out.
Launch speed is good for coach flaps. Speed around 90 knots. That was a challenging approach in the dark in the middle of nowhere. Well, welcome to Greenland, folks. Uh, here we are. This place is Narsisawak, I think how it's pronounced. And it's a popular stopover for aircraft on the way to Iceland from uh, Labrador. It's about halfway, so we spend the night here and uh, it was definitely a challenging leg, that's for sure. Lots of weather to deal with and uh, that uh, approach, visual approach into this airfield at night is very challenging. So so I think we'll uh, head in, call it a night. We'll go for, uh, I think a local beer here is called a Kujak, uh, Kwajak uh, Classic. And uh, we'll head in for that and uh, here the caribou burgers here are really good. So we'll try one of those. And our next day we'll uh, plan to go to uh, Iceland. So I hope you can join us for that leg. It's kind of dark here. I'm just trying to find the turnoff point. Right here. Yep, there we go. And uh, when we leave here, uh, the next time it'll be daylight, so uh, we'll see the uh, scenery here in Greenland. It should be amazing if it's uh, good weather. There's uh, lots of uh, fjords and glaciers, so it should be great uh, scenery leaving Greenland. Look, they're here waiting for us, so I think we'll just uh, park here. And uh, 
uh, call it a night. So thanks for joining me today. If you uh, want to make sure you're with us for the next leg of our trip to Iceland, make sure you hit the subscribe button and uh, hit notifications, and then you'll know when we're doing our next trip about once a week. And uh, so again, thanks for coming out, and uh, take care, everyone. So long.